Now, last week we met our uh, mum-to-be, Alison Callaghan, as she prepares for the birth of her first child in September. So this week, as part of our uh, pregnancy diary, we decided to go to one of Alison's antenatal classes to see the different exercises that uh, make sure that the birth of her child will go as smoothly as possible. Let's have a look. International model Alison Canavan is seven months pregnant and has kindly agreed to take part in the Ireland AM Pregnancy Diary. So today we're at a mother care store here in Belgard in Dublin for her second antenatal visit. So all you expectant mums, pay close attention. Well good morning everyone. You're all very welcome to your second antenatal class. And today we thought we might start and do a little bit of exercises and breathing to help you prepare for um, labour and the imminent delivery of, of your babies. So maybe just to, to centre ourselves and to focus, if you could just all sit up as straight as you can, uncross the legs, and maybe we'll just take a calming breath. So between your thumb and middle finger, if you would just hold your own wrist and let it just sit there happily in your lap. Take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, I want you to whisper the word calm. Very good. Now can you do it with your eyes closed even maybe? So just breathe in and as you breathe out, whisper calm. Just now to waken up the shoulders because sometimes in pregnancy we go a little bit forward because of the extra weight of the breast. If you would just put the tips of your fingers here and just roll your elbows up towards your ears, sprout a wing out to the side and down. Now you might need to shuffle around to get a little bit of extra room. So we're going to incorporate the breathing into this. We're going to breathe in as we come up. We're going to pause as we sprout the wings and then we're going to breathe out as we come down. You got it? One more time. Breathing in, sprout the wings and pause and blow it all out. I certainly enjoyed that. How did you find it? Found it very relaxing. I think any form of breathing is really important in everyday life. I've been doing, uh, as well as these classes, a lot of yoga. So I'm trying to incorporate the breathing as much as possible. It's my first child, so I have no idea what's ahead of me in a few. You're doing everything right, aren't you? Trying to do everything right, yeah, in preparation for the big day. So, fingers crossed. Margaret, you're introducing a birthing ball here. Tell us about this. Well, the birthing balls have become very popular, and they're great at the end of pregnancy because women often have a lot of pressure going down into the pelvis. Okay. And sitting on the ball is much more comfortable than sitting on the hard chair. Of course, now, okay. It, again, it's good for bouncing on so that, so that again, the pelvis can be loosened out and it's very good for your posture of course okay well look Alison's going to be a very good sport here so we'll let you guide Alison through it and I'll get out of your way Margaret okay safety is paramount here um, Alison that you need to make sure if you're not used to the ball that you'd have it up against the wall so that you're not going to slide off it and it's always nice maybe to have somebody else with you but if you just bounce ever so slightly on yeah. that ball just like so all the while you're relieving a little bit of pressure down on the pelvic floor but also you're stretching out the inner thighs and it really makes you sit up straight yeah, because if you don't you're going to fall off it okay, yeah. so it, it is good for that and then you can do little hip movements like a little bit of salsa dance and ever so slightly and you can do that backwards and forwards oh, backwards yeah and, forwards, and then okay. yeah and this is used during, during labor? Yes, when, when you're having your contractions, this is a good distraction method. And of yeah. course, it's also helping the baby it's come. It's kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and it's, it just helps the baby come down to the birth canal. And you could roll over too, you know, you could be on your knees and just rock forward on the ball. And that can be just a, a relaxing way just to get through another contraction and another contraction. And of course, each contraction is getting you near your goal. Alison, the first thing we're going to do, you're sitting in a lovely posture there with, with, in the tailor position, but I'm just going to adjust your posture here ever so slightly. So if you could just for one hand lift the breastbone, perfect. And you see that automatically lifts the breastbone up, gives a nice position to the lower back, and the chin is up. Now you have wonderful posture anyway, but just to be aware of that, because in pregnancy the breasts are large and sometimes you can tend to go forward. Now the idea in sitting in this position is to stretch out the inner thighs. And if you can go a little bit further to put the soles of the feet together, 
Now that even gives a better stretch to the inner thighs. And this is the bony pelvis. And when you're sitting like that, it's actually opening up the front of the pelvis in preparation for delivery. So you would only hold this position probably for about the count of four. And then you would, would release it. So from there, if you can just stretch the legs straight down and support yourself with your two hands here so you get that nice uprightness still and we'll do the leg and the foot exercises that we were talking about. So up and down with the two feet. Yes, you can do the two together or you can do up and down. Now, I want you to slow that down. I want you to breathe in as you're bringing the toes up towards your face and breathe out as you're going away. So it's all in, in unison and I hope you're feeling the stretch going up the back of the legs so that therefore we're trying to prevent varicose veins but hopefully you won't be getting too many cramps. And now if you just bring the toes up towards your face, hold them there for the count of four, you'll notice the heels have come off the floor, you get a better stretch up the legs and now just wriggle the two legs so that you clap them all out, yeah, absolutely shake them all out, yeah, yeah, shake them all out. Perfect. Now, earlier in the show, we saw our pregnancy diary mum-to-be, Alison Canavan, in an antenatal class as she tried out different breathing techniques and different exercises that will help her relax during childbirth. Now, Alison joins us uh, uh, on the couch, uh, along with midwife Margaret Merrigan Feenan, and uh, they're going to talk about the advantages of antenatal classes, the uh, different stages of labour, and more importantly, when is the correct time to go to hospital. Morning to you both. Um, Morning. 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 Well, Margaret, I'll start with you. Um, the advantages of, of uh, antenatal classes, why you would recommend them? Well, I think, you know, antenatal education is an integral part of preparing for the labour and, and for the birth. And really expecting mothers benefit hugely from it because they meet other pregnant women, but it always it, it alleviates their fears and their anxieties. And in the class, they get an opportunity to, to discuss many, many topics. So really, we, we bring them through everything from coping with labor, with the delivery, with coping, with the feeding, the bathing, and really the reality of becoming parents. But of course, they're not just for expectant mums, they're also for expectant dads and other birth, birthing partners. The whole, like, I mean, obviously as a male I can't speak personally, but observing it, it it's an incredibly overwhelming experience, especially first time out. And an awful lot of women, and very smart, bright, intelligent women, have a, a sense of... Uh, they're the first ones ever to do it and, and they're, all, they're kind of doing it all on their own it's never happened to anybody else now they know in reality that's not the truth but they, they feel like that because they, they don't, they're not in charge of their bodies anymore well, well, well that's it well that's it it's a huge it's, it's an enormous experience for, for women and if you think about it it's a whole nine months and then they have this word labour and, and they're absolutely terrified. <laughs> so as you say, they might be the most academic people in the world, but because now this is something they're not necessarily in control over. And therefore, coming to the classes really allays all those fears. So even and if it just gives you a sense of community as a woman with other women who are in the same boat, and it does that for you, Well, well there is that. But yeah. we really try to empower them that their body mm. is capable of doing this and mm. doing it on, the, on their own. But if they feel they need some help along the line with analgesia, that, that, that is all discussed in, in a very open way. And I will bring you in here. I, I, when we mentioned labour there, you were like, <laughs> Jesus, you're, you're approaching it. So did you find the antenatal classes productive? Were they something that made you feel more confident and I, allayed your fears? I think they're absolutely essential. You know, I, before I became pregnant, it's not something I gave much thought to, but absolutely essential to know what you're going in, to know what's ahead of you. So what did you learn? What did you pick up there that you um, found really useful? The breathing techniques definitely that are supposed to, supposed to, because I haven't been through labour yet. <laughs> um, but when you're doing the breathing the pain techniques... and help, it, help make the labour more manageable. Do you think they will? Do you, did, like, did you come away thinking, yeah, that will relax me and will help me? Yeah, I think yeah. breathing in any form definitely helps. I mean, when we're going through a stressful day at work, aren't you just told all the time, breathe, take deep breaths? So I'm hoping that that works. I, it's, it's a lot of food for thought. It makes you quite nervous. You know, there's a lot of head. <laughs> it's kind of, oh my God. But uh, yeah, no, I think they're definitely, they're really important. And what about from the point of view, as Mark was saying, meeting other mums-to-be and that sense of like we're all in it together and sharing, does that help a lot? It does because I think pregnancy can be, I know it sounds strange, but it can be quite a lonely time because it's very emotional and you're up and down all the time. So to know that other people are feeling the same way you do, that they're experiencing the same feelings, 
makes you feel normal. That yeah. you're not mad. Yeah, that you're not on your own. You're not a lunatic, which I felt like since last Saturday. I can pinpoint it. <laughs> Till yesterday, it subsided a bit. My sister was calling me Hitler um, because I was making everybody clean the house. I was on a mad cleaning frenzy all weekend. So, um, yeah, so I've kind of subsided back to being normal Alison again for the time being. Well, that happened to one of my friends. Her husband came home and shut the washing machine on. He said, honey, there's nothing in the washing machine. She went, I know, I'm washing the washing machine. <laughs> and she was nearly at the time to have birth, give uh, birth. And he was like, OK, okay. fair enough. <laughs> yeah, your nesting period will be fun, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. The antenatal <laughs> classes uh, cover size of labour, when to go to the hospital, stages of labour, breathing techniques, pelvic floor exercises, all of that. Now, um, at this stage, you're pretty well into it. Um, yeah. Everything is going really well, thank God, and touch yeah. wood. Um, so the next bit for you really will be the event itself. Now, I, I don't know, Margaret, how you prepare any woman for that. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I, you know, your mother can sit down and say, well, look, this is what happened to me. But for each woman, the experience is very different because, for example, when the contractions start, where you are, what you're doing, that can vary from, you know, you could be in the loo, you could be shopping, you could be mm -hmm. out driving, you could mm -hmm. be asleep and wake up mm -hmm. and go, oh, I think it started. So that's, yeah. well, knowing we, the signs is very important, isn't yes, it? And not labor panicking, sign, of course. It, labor is more a series of events that mm. happen. It's not any one thing. And you will hear women saying that, that maybe they had a loose bowel, maybe they had this, this yeah. nesting, cleaning frenzy. But, but really we're looking out for probably three things. And that would be the show, it would be the waters breaking, and it would be the contractions. But it's going to be a long process, so it really doesn't matter where you are. Do you know that, that you don't have to instantly do something? You're going to relax yourself with your breathing techniques, and then you're going to take stock of what do I need to do. If, if your waters have broken, if you think they have broken, you must go to the hospital. With the contractions, they're usually going to build up in length, build up in strength, and come closer together. And when they do that and when they form a regular pattern, and maybe you're down to about one and ten minutes, mm. then it will be time enough yeah, to that's be going the thing to the you, you don't need to rush straight to the hospital mm. the minute you get what no. you think is well, the first contraction. Especially on your first. Yeah. And unless now, if you, you were on your second or third and you had a very quick labour the first time, yes, you take that into consideration. But always remember the hospital are there 24-7. So you, we're at the end of a phone line. If you're in doubt, always mm. ring. But with the show, usually you don't have to go to the hospital. It's only with the waters breaking and the contractions. But if someone's going to sit up all night worrying, we would prefer that they would ring and ask for mm. advice. Alison, are you, are you all prepared? Do you have the bag ready? Is that I do, actually. You do, yeah. yeah. I'm actually, up to two weeks ago I wasn't, but I've since the whole nursery's just this weekend it'll be finished. Are you going for natural or for epidural? Um, I, I, <laughs> I spoke about natural a couple of weeks ago because my friend Louise in London made it sound like just a dream come true. She'd brought her kids, she had a bath, everything happened so naturally. Came home, I said, I don't think I bother with the epidural. So. I don't know. After my back pain yesterday, and it was just back pain, that wasn't labour, I'm starting to rethink the whole epidural thing. Well, uh, Margaret, as Margaret said, every woman would like to have a natural birth, and if you can, you can. If you can't, you take what's yeah. on offer. Well, this is it. And, and in labour, you, you can ask for what you want. So we would always suggest yeah. go in with an open mind. You probably will cope better than you think. But you don't will. give it too late, because it can get too late to ask for the epidural, can't yeah, I? Very, yeah, very, very, very rarely, very seldom. Very seldom. Okay. <laughs>